but have egg fried rice on the menu today. Yeah. No, 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 no. It's got peanut oil. Hi. Uh... MSG. Why so MSG? little? <laughs> that to me MSG is not... that to me was way more reasonable of a, of an MSG portion. Expensive. Don't be so stingy. Some use soy small. Sauce? Use small. Okay. That's right. You guys have requested it, and it's finally here. We're gonna see if Uncle Roger himself. Can do the job. Hi, uh, so much pasta. Chef Brian Sow here, not your typical chef, and today I'm gonna be reacting to Uncle Roger make egg fried rice 3 million subscriber special. That's right, you guys have requested it, and it's finally here. I'm gonna react to Uncle Roger making a dish. No more of watching Uncle Roger react to someone else. We're gonna see if Uncle Roger himself can do the job. Shout out to Scott Haga and the rest of my sous chef level patrons. Thank you so much for your support. It really does mean a lot to me. If you've been enjoying this series and want to support further, be sure to visit the link in the description below to check out my Patreon page where you can take advantage of some awesome perks. As we've been doing for the last few months, we are doing a giveaway and this time it's for an official Chef Brian Sao snapback hat. This giveaway is available to everybody worldwide. All you have to do is like, comment, and be subscribed. Yep, it's that simple. Also, if you could take a quick second to check out Mission Sandwich. This is the official account for my upcoming sandwich shop opening up in Williamsburg, Brooklyn this Friday, April 29th. That's right. You can finally get to try some of my creations if you're in the New York City area. Be sure to check it out and I would love to meet you. Last but not least, my band Lost Becomes has released a brand new single. Be sure to check it out. Link in the description below if you like heavy chuggy riffs or just need good music to work out to this will be your jam if you're new to the channel i am a professional chef with 17 years of experience i've defeated bobby flay on the food network show beat bobby flay as well as run the world-renowned kitchen of beauty in essex located right here in new york city the views and opinions expressed in this show are exactly that they are just my views and opinions based on my years as a culinary professional i also don't get it right and and if you have something to add, please let me know in the comments below as I'm always learning and I would love to hear from you. And with that all out of the way, let's see what Uncle Roger's got in the kitchen. Let's see if you can get the job done, Uncle Roger. To get my job back, I will impress you with my egg fire rice. But first, tell our viewer, what is Mei Mei? Uh, Mei Mei is a Singaporean coffee tiam, so we do Singaporean coffee tea. We specialize in Hanani's chicken rice. I did not, I, 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 I'm guessing kopi tiam is a term for a type of restaurant, or I don't know, let me know in the comments below. But this place is called Mei Mei, and she referred to it as a kopi tiam. Did not know that. And also, for those of you who don't know, you know, uh, Singapore, uh, if I'm not mistaken, is located the south of Malaysia. It's a big major port city. So the food is very much related, very much related. By the way, this stuff looks absolutely delicious. So seeing as you review so many others, so I'm gonna be quite harsh on you. Hi, uh, so much pressure. Damn straight. Uncle Roger. Uncle Roger talking all that smack. He better get ready to show what he's about. Um, yeah, I'm excited. I'm not professional chef. I just home cook. Now I'm gonna be judged my Michelin star chef. By the way, Michel having a Mich Michelin star is no joke. I've never had a Michelin star, uh, and it is not easy. I worked at an establishment that got a Michelin star long after I had left. But yeah, I mean, doing Michelin star rated cuisine is is on a completely different level. Step one. Throw away your chili gem. Yep, straight up. Yes, yes, in the trash. In that, That's a waste of money, but in the trash. This is not Jamie Oliver cooking show. <laughs> Please, can I have one of your knives? No, 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 this is paring knife. This is not used for chopping. This list tried to trick me. <laughs> this is more like it. Mm. Asian people, when we cook, all we need is one knife. Y you know, in Asian, uh, kitchens that I've worked in, the uh, you know the Asian chefs will 99.9% .9 of the time only use a cleaver to cut everything. Uh, it's very common in the Western kitchen for you to have many knives. So let me see. Hang on, hang on. Let me see if I can show you guys some of it. I'm a sandwich guy. I'm opening up a sandwich shop. This is a serrated knife. Has that those burrs on there. That's good for 
cutting bread. Here's a couple of different knives. These are uh, shucking knives for oysters and clams. You know, the oysters have like a beveled edge on bo both sides with a point that goes into the edge of the oyster. And then the clam knife only has one beveled edge so you can insert it into the side of the clam and pop it open. Here's the chef knife that I've showed many of you guys before. This is the knife that I beat Bobby Flay with. This is a, this is a German style chef's knife, eight inch chef's knife. And this is the knife that I used on the episode of Beat Bobby Flay I did. And then this is a Japanese style knife. You get the idea. Western, Westerners like to buy lots of knives and Easterners are really cheap. So they only have one knife. Garlic. For one portion of egg fried rice, at least five cloves. Asian people love garlic. We treat garlic like we treat our children. They never enough. <laughs> You smash the garlic so you don't end up like K cooking. The garlic don't run away from you. <laughs> Uncle Roger, not the best garlic chopper, but don't worry, everything look cooler in slow motion. True. So Liz, what you think of my chopping so far? It could be a bit finer. I agree, even from what I saw just on <laughs> Uncle Roger's face. <laughs> Uh, it could definitely go a little finer. If he's only making one portion of fried rice, I'm assuming he's gonna make like two or three portions. Even for me, five cloves is a little much, and you're talking to a guy who loves garlic. But, you know, Uncle Roger's preference, go for it. Just complain. <laughs> garlic is the best thing ever. Many people- Yo, that's what Asians do, man, is just, they fucking complain. <laughs> <laughs> it's, I think everyone know that everyone just complains. It's like a person's default is typically to complain. Um, yo, be happy with life, man. Complain, garlic, give them bad breath. But don't worry, Uncle Roger's single, not kissing anyone anyway. That is one good part about being lonely. Nobody know you have bad breath. Now we chop shallot. Shallot is better version of onion. Nicer flavor. Don't use onion for your egg fried rice. Only poor people use onion. <laughs> That's not necessarily true, but I do enjoy the flavor of shallots. Not more or less than onions, they're just different. I would say that it's not as uh, pungent as onion, and it's also on the uh, slightly sweeter side versus an onion. And I think for uh, especially a Southeast Asian style, shallot is definitely, definitely the way to go, but I have zero reservations about using onion and fried rice as well. And then you slice it from the middle. Okay. Be careful your hands. Don't worry, hospital very close. It is. All right, all right. So utilizing legit knife skills, um, chopping slivers on the top and then going once or twice through the side and it gives you an automatic, in this case, like a medium, a small to medium dice. Now time for egg. Uncle Roger like to use one full egg and one egg yolk. This is technique I learned from Malaysian chef Sherson Lian. Check out his YouTube channel. Many people say egg yolk give you cholesterol, but Uncle Roger say cholesterol is full of flavor. Whisk the egg. No, not with whisk. Hiya. No Asian person use whisk. We whisk egg with chopstick. Mm -hmm. What kind of Asian restaurant you run? Why you have whisk? <laughs> You have whisk, do you also have colander? No. Yo, this girl is such a sport. One Michelin star and letting this dude dunk on her like that. <laughs> Next, we chop spring onion. spring onion. This is another classic Asian ingredient. Chop away the shit you don't need. Don't throw away, we use the stock. Mm -hmm. You use the shit you don't need? Yeah. yeah. Michelin star chef love using trash to cook their food. <laughs> Last thing you need to chop is chili. Uncle Roger loves spice because Uncle Roger not pussy. And of course, for egg fire rice, you have to use leftover rice. But this is Uncle Roger's biggest secret. It's not just any leftover rice. This is leftover chicken rice. Mm. This is rice cooked with chicken stock, Bad. ginger and garlic. Oh, okay. Full chicken of stock. flavor because you leave it overnight. Now the rice is so separated. Yep. So nice. Mmm. This rice feel better than woman. Uncle Roger, stop touching the rice. <laughs> Auntie had and left Uncle Roger too long now. This is the only time I get to touch something moist. <laughs> so cringe. 
The way I've seen it done in the past is, is that they'll actually use some chicken fat and mix it in. Oh, so good, so good. Uh, and using that for your fried rice, nice touch, Uncle Roger. And, you know, he's showing you the day-old rice will give you more rice grain separation, which is a desired quality that you want to have in your end product of an egg fried rice. Soy sauce, Asian sesame oil, must mm. be Asian. Mm -hmm. And of course, we must not forget the most important ingredient, the king of flavor, Uncle Roger's MSG. white powder of choice, MSG. Mm. <laughs> Do you use MSG in your cooking now? We do now, Uncle Yay. Roger. I think you're going to get second Michelin star soon. Uncle Roger using my favourite brand of MSG, Sasa. This is from Indonesia. Uncle Roger samples so many different types of MSG and this tastes the best. Hi, uh, don't use vegetable. Vegetable tastes like sad. That's not true. Okay. okay, now we start cooking. But we got one problem. Induction stove, hi, uh, Liz, where your fire? Where your gas stove? Well, we don't have any gas connection here, Uncle Roger, but this is not the average induction for the home. This is the top of the range induction for chefs. You get a really good wok hay. Uncle Roger want to work here, so I will try to use this. So really quick in, about induction burners. I've spoken about it in past videos. Induction burners have their pros and cons. Let's talk about an induction Induction burner as far as Eastern cuisine goes. I mean, you know, the wok. What do you think of wok other than the wok spoon, an Asian dude behind the wok? The wok itself is the big flames. And that high powered flame is a part of helping you to achieve wok hay. I'm not gonna go too deep into wok hay, but watch some of my previous videos like the Jamie Oliver one. And uh, I, I think I talk about it in the Joshua Wiseman uh, reacts video that I did. So, um, with induction burners, what's happening, and shout out to Adam Ragusia, because I ended up watching his video about induction burners, thanks to you guys in the comments, gives a great freaking breakdown about what induction burners are. I'm not gonna go into great detail, but essentially what's happening is the induction burner is causing the pot itself to heat up versus a heat source hitting the pot and then warming up the, um, the cooking vessel, I should say. So it's a much more efficient transfer of heat. It causes the area to heat up less because it's it's not, again, the heat source is not being caused by a flame. It's going directly to the cooking vessel. So that's a great benefit for your home, for the kitchen. I have been to kitchens that are all induction burners and they are uh, really pleasant to work in because it's not literally not that hot and that is, one of the hardest parts about working in the kitchen is just the heat. It's not as easy, I would say, to cook Asian style food on an induction burner only because it's just not the norm. And it's like anything else, if you practice with it and learn the limitations and pros, again, the pros and cons, you work around it and you figure it out. For me personally, I tend to like to work with fire. That's just how I've cooked my entire career. There's nothing wrong with induction burners. It's just different. Last thing I'll say about induction burners is that uh, they are becoming increasingly more popular as the world pushes for renewable renewable sources of energy using less greenhouse gases and stuff like that. For me, for example, I, I in my restaurant that's opening up literally this Friday, it's an all electric kitchen because it's become such a pain in the ass to get gas into new spaces. You know, a market like this, not having to do all the, the, the plumbing work of getting the gas pipes in there to each location, you will save a lot of money just going electric. So that's something I've noticed as a professional working in the industry. But I also know that induction stoves have become very popular in newly uh, constructed homes. Again, you avoid the whole thing of another set of plumbing work with routing gas into your space. So yeah. Uh, kind of cool stuff, you know, world keeps changing, right? Don't worry, professional walk, not non-stick walk. So if you use metal spoon in this, your mom won't come and beat you. <laughs> First coat the wok with oil, and this is peanut oil because Uncle Roger loves to kill all the weak peanut oh, allergy people. Once the oil starts smoking, throw away the oil, correct so far? Yes, yeah. Apart from the peanut oil thing. And but... don't use... Uh, go going back to this induction burner, you can clearly s see that it is getting that pan 
hot. So they are gonna have no problem achieving that wake. Peanut oil? No, we don't use peanut oil here because we don't want to kill anyone. Oh! They're not weak to us. This is your carpet. <laughs> If you can't use peanut oil, vegetable oil, okay also. Just don't use olive oil. This is not Jamie Oliver cooking <laughs> show. No olive oil. Jamie Oliver, get your olive oil out of here. <laughs> Spread the oil nicely Hot around spire. the wok. Okay, first thing in, garlic and shallot. Great. Fry it a bit until it's fragrant. Next step, egg. Stir it around when it's almost all solid, like this. Time for the rice. See how fast that's happening? I keep mentioning that I prefer to do my egg first, but this works totally fine. I, I feel like going with your uh, onions and garlic first, you have a higher potential to burn the product, but it seems like Uncle Roger's working fast. From what I can see looking at the screen right now, it doesn't appear that anything has burned. And like I said, I think Uncle Roger's working fast enough where that didn't happen. Every time you're adding something to a cooking vessel that is cold or room temperature, you are cooling down that pan. So his wok is hot. He puts in the shallots and garlic. That's gonna slightly cool the pan. That pan is screeching hot. So uh, again, it's gonna cool down. He added his eggs, that's gonna cool it down again. I would have gone egg first. It's uh, a liquid, right? It's gonna cool down the pa pan. It has a lot of moisture, so it's gonna take a little bit more time to cook and then put in your garlic and shallots. I would prefer to have gone egg first, then shallots and garlic. Uh, Uncle Roger did the opposite. Not wrong, just different. Uncle Roger never mm. measured. Okay, I'm not a fan of him using his hand to take the rice. Number one, that's sloppy as hell. The rice is, even though it's day old rice and it doesn't stick as much it will still stick that shit's gonna get all over his hand then he's gonna grab the wok spoon again if he was working in my kitchen i would tell him not to do that right away and if he does it again he will get fired there's another big big reason why you don't do this in the kitchen department of health doh standard is that you can have bare hand contact so long as the food product is not ready to eat. So for example, ready to eat would be like salad greens or a cooked, uh, let's say a cooked hamburger patty. If for whatever reason you had a hamburger patty on the grill and you took your bare hand, grabbed it and put it on the burger bun and then served it, big, big no-no, big, big violation. In this case, the rice he's taking is not ready to eat because it's going to go from this container into a, uh, a into the wok, which is hot as hell and going to kill off any bacteria that there is, right? Technically, that's okay. What makes it not okay is, you know, your hands are probably one of the dirtiest things on your body. Just think about it. You touch stuff with it constantly. And unless you're washing hands every time, you, after every time you touch something, there's going to be unseen bacteria and, and all types of stuff on your hands. You know, something a chef taught me was that your mise en place or your prep, whether it's your rice or chopped up vegetables, um, whatever it is on your station for service will last much longer if you don't have any bare hand contact. Because every time you touch the product, you are introducing foreign stuff ingredient uh, ingredients uh, yeah, well that potentially too right if you cross contaminate but you are introducing new bacteria and germs every single time you have bare hand contact but if you use a spoon or tongs or anything to take that product and put it into your pan like i said your mise en place will last significantly it's a bit dry so i'll put a bit more oil in there now we add soy sauce just use feeling. We put soy sauce in until our ancestors tell us it's enough. Uh, I think more of what he's saying is to get the soy sauce sizzling and almost to that burn point, just right under that burn point and then slowly fold in the rice into that. That is part of achieving the wok hay uh, into his fried rice. Sesame you oil have to at the end, the rice just so a little don't... bit. That's right, at the end, just a little bit or close to the end. I think he's probably going to go in with the green onion next and it'll pretty much be done. You don't want to abuse the sesame oil. It's already so fragrant. A little bit of heat will increase that fragrance, but you also don't want to burn it. Remember, something like uh, sesame oil or any type of nut oil, it's not just pure oil. There's also 
um, I don't know what the right term is. Uh, I really need to read up and like refresh on some of these terms and stuff. Basically, there's stuff in there that will singe versus like a pure vegetable oil. That's why they say it's a higher smoke point because it's just pure, pure oil versus something like a butter, which has milk solids in it. It's the milk solids that will actually burn and not the, the fat of the butter itself. Come together. And now the most important ingredient, MSG Fuyo. Wow. And That's a lot. <laughs> You're going to be thirsty after you eat Final that. Final garnish. Spring onion right, and great. chili. Wonderful. Stir At the everything. very end, keeps it nice and fresh. You know, still has that little bit of fragrant pop. Uh, and by putting it at the end rather than what Jamie Oliver did and putting it in at the beginning and just wilting it down and making it slimy. Brown. This induction stove not bad. Yeah. Uncle Roger that, changed that, my that mind. Induction, that induction stove is legit. God, he is messy, though. Okay, so over there, you can tell, you can really tell Uncle Roger's a home cook. Uh, what I would have done is put the plate on the station uh, or off to the side, obviously not on the burner, and then take the wok and the spoon and put it down. You don't need to hold the plate and, and actually plate. Whenever we're working in uh, pro kitchens, plate's always down. It's stable. It won't move on you if you're holding your hand. You know, your hand has a little bit of a shake to it. You know, the more efficient way is put the plate to the side, take the cooking vessel and put it onto the pan. Again, He's not a pro. He's a home cook. Uh, not going to take points away from him on that. See, so simple. Five minutes. That's all you need for Uncle Roger egg fried rice. For a home cook. There's five cloves of garlic in there, and that is one portion of rice. Like, that's what I would eat. I would kill that in a second. Uh, and five cloves of garlic is a lot, like I said, even for me, and I like my garlic. Not too bad. Okay. You're a little messy. But it's yeah. okay. It's okay. Professional Definitely kitchen messy. got professional cleaner. When I cook at home, I'm more tidy because I clean myself. But a professional kitchen, you can hire people clean for you. You know what? Thousand percent the truth, even for me. Um, I tend to work as clean as I possibly can. I'm just kind of OCD in that way. You know, when you're working in the pro kitchen, that's what you have dishwashers and porters for. That's part of their job. Obviously, you don't want to abuse that. You always try to push, push your cooks to work cleaner. But again, you're pumping out food fast and, you know, just tons of orders and Things are inevitably going to get messy in any kitchen. But you're going to be cleaning this, Uncle no, Roger. No, no, no. <laughs> yes. Dude. Dude, yes. Make him clean up that shit. Clean up after yourself. I applying drop as chef, not as cleaner. Now time for taste test. Hi, uh, Asian people. We don't eat rice with fork. Okay, this is better. Eat a spoon or chopstick only. If you eat rice with a with chopsticks, you're normally going to have a rice bowl and then kind of shove the rice into your mouth. Uh, I mentioned this in previous videos, but in Southeast Asia, it's very common to see people eat with a fork and a spoon, and they're using the fork to push the food onto the spoon and spooning it, spooning it into their mouth, obviously. Not bad, Uncle Roger. Not bad. Not a lot of MSG. <laughs> not a lot of MSG, just the right amount. <laughs> that was a lot of MSG, a lot. Uh, and like I said, that is going to make you thirsty by the end of it. No such thing as too much MSG. Sometimes we complain food too salty or food too sweet, but nobody ever complained food too umami. Guys, Oh, this guy looks so familiar. I think he is peanut allergy guy from First May May Weijo. Why you don't want peanut? I'm allergic. Why yeah, so man. weak? <laughs> wow, dude, brutal. We have egg fried rice on the menu today. Yeah. No, 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 no. It's got peanut oil. Hi. -ya. Listen, uh, in the professional kitchen, allergies are very serious. You can kill people if you give your customer the wrong information. So it's very important um, 
that you have a very clearly listed out set of allergens that can be that are found in each one of your dishes because you may run you know if you have an inexperienced guy that handed off this plate oh i just used oil but you didn't think that this was using peanut oil again you could kill someone so something you know He's making a joke here, obviously, but in a professional working environment, allergies are something that you have to take very seriously. It's not bad for a home cook. Okay, okay. I'll show you how a Michelin star will cook this. Yeah, all right. We're gonna see Liz make some fried rice. I uh, did not know that this was a two-part video. Very excited. So let's check out what Liz does. And I think we are going to see something really cool here. We're gonna see how a pro does it. This is literally an AB of home cook to pro chef. Um, let's see what she does. Let's see. Master class. The technique you got just right. Heat up the oil to season the wok. Mm -hmm. You just want to get it nice and smoky. Get that wok, hey? Hi, uh, takes so long. Uncle Roger finished cooking and eating already. Instead of using oil, I'm going to use some pork fat because. Pork fat. Yeah, mm. I like the flavor of pork fat. You didn't tell Uncle Roger you have pork fat. Uncle Roger loves pork. Pig are the smartest but also delicious animal. Okay, so it looks like she's got garlic and onion in there, similar to how Uncle Roger started it. Pork fat. Nobody have pork fat at home. They can. You can buy it. But if you're vegetarian, don't use. Just use vegetable oil. Eggs going in. So are Eggs. you saying vegetarian people don't this? You see how laser focused Liz is and how fast she's moving. She is, you know, again, she is ready. She's moving with confidence. Um, and yeah, let's get flavor. The rice is going in. Rice. You see how she's using a tool, not using her hand because uh, also another thing by using your hand and having to clean your hand is you're wasting time. If you have 10, 15 fried rices ordered, uh, well, she could probably do three or four portions at a time but you know you get the idea if she had several orders waiting you know several customers waiting for orders of egg fried rice if you had to what clean your hands after every single time because you were working dirty you were wasting a lot of time and you are ultimately going to um delay the customer from getting their food nice. Oh, MSG? Little Why so MSG. little? Yeah. That to me <laughs> is that to me was way more reasonable of a of an MSG portion. Expensive. Don't be so stingy. Some use soy more. Sauce? Use okay. more. No, no, that's enough. Hi. Soy sauce yeah. is quite salty already, and white pepper. Ah, yes, yes, yes. White pepper is the unsung underrated hero of Chinese, or I should say Asian cuisine in general, or most of Asia, I should say, used very often. And white pepper is also indigenous to Asia. Uh, it was actually one of the ingredients I was planning to use in my egg fried rice video. So love that. Some people don't like white pepper because they think it tastes like mold, but if used correctly, it adds to the big picture. Awesome, Liz. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Pat, oh, Uncle Roger forgot about that ingredient. I know with mine, I got the spring onion, garlic, mm. chive, and chili. Mm. Oh, Michelin star tossing. Messy also. <laughs> Hi, uh... Uncle Roger, I may may make uh, sambal black chan. This is mm. the ingredient Uncle Gordon used in his yep. video to Michelin star. Again, putting it at the end, you know, uh, the sambal paste and... Uh, uh, like rendang paste and stuff like that. They are very concentrated in flavor. But um, if you put it in at the very end, you don't abuse it. You do condense the flavors a little more. And again, you put it at the very end, fold it in. Really, really nice touch. Uh, egg fried rice. Let's see how it tastes. Mm. It's a spoon this time. Yes, correct. Mmm. Mmm. Just really good. <laughs> A little bit better than my version. Just a little bit. So you're saying I'm just sambal and pork lard away from being Michelin star chef? There's a little bit more hard work in, involved in it, but yes. Uncle Roger approved. Good. She's officially Auntie Liz now. Oh, what, so we're married? <laughs> no, no, Uncle Roger don't want to marry you. Hi, yeah. Uh... Hey, congrats, Uncle Roger, on the 3 million subs, even though now you're at over 5 million, I believe. Uh, well deserved. I think you do great content. I love how, although sometimes uh, in a mean way, <laughs> spreading uh, you know more education about uh, Asian cookery and culture in general. Again, sometimes taking the piss a little bit too hard, but all good. Auntie Liz, 
good shit. You can clearly tell experienced, experienced chef. I think her egg fried rice looked absolutely wonderful. As far as grades, one out of 10 for Uncle Roger. I'm gonna give him a solid eight and a half. And for Auntie Liz, I'm gonna give her a 10. 10 out of 10, well-deserved, good stuff. This was an absolute blast. And uh, you know what, guys, hope you enjoyed this video as much as I did making it. And with that out of the way, I am Chef Brian Sow, not your typical chef, and I'll see you really soon.